asks, what other than desire should guide our actions? Well, I, I don't know if anything other than desire should guide our actions. The question is, what kind of desire? Mm -hmm. I don't know if anything but desire can guide your actions, because as, as John Spina has taken pains to point out, you're stuck with this problem of care, mm -hmm. which, which Heidegger, of course, talked yes, a lot about. Yes, yes. Um, something has to shine the spotlight on what you should attend to, and in some sense, that's inevitably desire. The thing is, is that it's desire for what is the question, and then that's a multi-level hierarchical question. There are some desires that are better than others, and so in the postmodern world, you might say, well, what do you mean by better? It's like, Piaget actually answered that technically, I, I think, and this is what makes him not a moral relativist. He said, theory A is better than theory B, if Theory A accounts for all that theory B accounts for, plus some more. Mm -hmm. And you can hierarchically organize moral presuppositions in the same way. Like, I would say, I'm going to use happiness, which is a word I don't really like. No, we'll use meaning instead. I could play a game that was meaningful by myself, and then I could play a game that was equally meaningful that you could also play. I would say that would be a better game, because why not have two for the price of one? And then if 10 of us can play it, hey, that's even better. And then if 10 of us can play it for a month, great. And then if 10 of us can play it for a month and everything gets better, well, that would even be better, and et cetera, et cetera. And, I, and this is partly why postmodernism bothers me so much. It's mm -hmm. like, it's not, it's not that hard to figure that out. <laughs> so kids figure it out real quick. The postmodernists just forgot that we noticed it when we were three. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony, Phil, um, I'll go next because I do have to leave by five exactly. So that's no problem. You next. can run out of here. Um, but you know that word "desire" that we're using, and it was heard, you heard a lot today in, in Dr. Kebazan's um, talk as well. There are many words for desire in Pali or Sanskrit, mm. and the word for desire that might be the one that guides um, choices and decisions is, is chanda, right? It means, it means desire, but it means aspirational desire, yeah. kind of positive desire, um, investigative desire. It's, it, it has a kind of qual it's a kind of desire that you want to develop. The other kinds of desire, like the second noble truth, craving, tanha, or greed, lobha, or kama, those are more Compulsive, uh, projected, idealized desires that almost always backfire on the person, and that's why the, that's why the Buddha made that the, the cause of, of of suffering, not desire, mm -hmm. as uh, as um, as many people misunderstand, but idealized desire. When you think the thing that you desire has the qualities that you think it does that will make you happy, that's not desire. That's called thirst, tana. It's, it's an unfortunate word because we translate it as craving, but craving isn't the right word. It probably means um, false delus delusory projections, but but you take that away, and what's what's left is chanda, and, and that's a very beautiful. You have to have that. You cannot function without it. That can be the guide to a discernment and to making wise decisions, and it's often part of the spiritual path is to develop chanda, not not um, not not craving or tana. All right, and um, thank you, and uh, Dr. Viveki, any final word on this thought? Uh, well, I guess it just depends what there's. Uh, I, I mean, I. Um, my training in Wittgensteinian philosophy is coming out a little bit here. I, I mean, it depends what you mean by guide. Uh, right. I mean, because that's an equivocal term. It could mean, you know, what gets us moving, what motivates us, but it could also mean what constrains us, you know, uh, and uh, so, I mean, in, in, in the first sense, I think something like Chanda, right, the, this care is what, is what should uh, guide us, but in the sense of, right, constraint, we've all been touching on one way or another the idea of character, that we have to build in systems that, you know, shape that and mm -hmm. restrain it mm -hmm. and, and limit it and also enable it in certain ways. And in that sense, you know, wisdom can guide us, mm -hmm. but not as something sort of opposed to desire, but more like, you know, the way we, we, we set up constraints on how something is going to operate or move.